Thank you. The next item of business is a statement by Jenny Ruth on A9 duelling update. The Minister will take questions at the end of her statement and therefore there should be no interruptions or interventions. I call on Jenny Ruth, Minister. Uh, up to 10 minutes, please. Presiding officer, I welcome the opportunity to provide an update to Parliament on the A9 duelling programme. The A9 cuts through the heart of Scotland, some call it the spine of Scotland, linking lowland with highland. It is a vital route for the people and the businesses of the north of this country. It is a road on which we have witnessed a devastating increase in fatalities in recent times. Before Christmas, I committed additional investment of £5 million from this government to improve short-term safety measures on the A9. But I am very clear that the main route to improving road safety will be in the full completion of the duelling programme between Perth and Inverness. That has been a long-standing commitment of this government, and we remain absolutely committed to fulfilling that. I recognise the significant public and parliamentary interest in the progress of the route championed by organisations such as the A9 Dual Action Group representatives of whom I met with very recently, also by members of this parliament who I have met with on a number of occasions in recent times to discuss the A9. Now, as MSPs will know, more recently we have been actively progressing the procurement of the next section of the programme from Tamatan and Moy. The process has now concluded and I wanted to take this opportunity today to advise members of the outcome and also to provide an update on the remaining sections of the programme. Now, before turning to those matters, it might be helpful both to reflect on the scale of the programme and also on the progress that has been made thus far. The programme comprises of uh, 11 projects, which together will provide approximately 80 miles of new dual carriageway between Perth and Inverness. With an estimated cost of £3 billion at 2008 prices, this is one of the largest infrastructure programmes ever undertaken in Scotland. Two of the 11 projects providing over 10 miles of new dual carriageway section are complete and are open to use. Those are the Kincraig to Dalradi and Lancarty to the Pass of Burnham sections, which opened in September 2017 and August 21, respectively. Ministerial decisions to complete the statutory process have been confirmed for eight of the nine remaining projects. That covers over 92 per cent of the length to be dueled. And for the one remaining section, we are continuing to progress the Pass of Burnham to Tay Crossing to identify a preferred option following an innovative co-creative process with the local community. An announcement on the preferred route there will be made this spring. Our investment of over £430 million to date has meant that much has already been achieved. Now, all of that has been done alongside the successful delivery of a number of other significant investments by the Government, including, of course, the Queen's Ferry Crossing, Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route and the M8 motorway improvements, delivering really tangible benefits to lives right across the country on a daily basis. Although much is still to be done, this Government is absolutely committed to completing the A9 duelling programme. Now, separately, as previously mentioned, in recognition of the immediate road safety concerns following fatal accidents that occurred on the route in the second half of 2022, I announced an investment of approximately £5 million in additional road safety measures for the A9 back in December. And I'm pleased to confirm that those are, have now commenced and are progressing well, as was confirmed to me by Bear Scotland at the A9 Safety Group meeting held last week in Inverness. That includes enhancements to signing and road markings, initially between uh, Burnham and Dalgais, and installation of electronic signs to display safety messages between Perth and Inverness. Furthermore, a road safety campaign targeting driver fatigue will begin on the 13th of February next week, and preparations for a drive on the left campaign are well underway ahead of a launch this Easter. Next month, I will convene a stakeholder summit with car hire companies serving our main airports to discuss further work that we can undertake with the sector to improve foreign drivers' understanding of the A9. My sympathies continue to be with everyone who has lost a loved one on Scotland's road. One life lost on any of Scotland's roads is, of course, one too many. As a government, it was imperative we responded to the devastating increase in fatalities on the A9, and I'm hopeful that those more immediate measures will help to support a reduction in road traffic accidents. I turn now to the outcome of the procurement of the Tomatin Tomoy project. Now, back in December of 2021, three bidders were invited to participate in a procurement exercise with final tenders required to be submitted by October of last year. This coincided with external factors, including the pandemic, disruption caused by Brexit and the war in Ukraine, with the inflationary impacts of all of those impacting, of course, significantly on the construction market. Now, unfortunately, the final return yielded only one tender submission. You will note the anticipated cost of the construction contract was £115 million at the time. 
following careful consideration of the tender, the price of which was significantly higher than expected, even allowing for the real-world impacts of the volatile economy, ministers have concluded that award of the contract at this time would not represent best value for the taxpayer. At any time, but particularly in the current climate, protecting public finances is an essential part of responsible government. Members will appreciate that, due to commercial confidentiality, it would be inappropriate for me to provide any further details of the bid, but I do want to make very clear our firm intention to re-tender for Tomat and Tomoy at pace and with some urgency. And I can confirm that the tenderer concerned has been informed of the decision in respect of his procurement today. I fully appreciate that this will be disappointing news for many people. However, I want to be absolutely clear to members of this chamber and to the communities and businesses served by the A9 between Perth and Inverness that the Scottish Government's commitment to duelling the section between Tomat and Tomoy remains absolute. This has been a very difficult decision to make, but we believe it is the only responsible one to take given the circumstances presented. I also want to reassure members that Transport Scotland is already taking the necessary preparatory steps for the re-tendering of Tomat and Tomoy. Work has begun to update contract terms and work will continue on preparations for the new procurement for Tomat and Tomoy with the firm aim of achieving a contract award before the end of this year. Now, at the end of last year, I invited MSPs to meet with Transport Scotland and wider stakeholders to discuss the range of short-term uh, proposals for investment on the A9, specifically in relation to the increase in fatalities we've seen on the route in recent times. To that end, and in a similar spirit, I would propose that soon after the re-tendering process commences, I will convene a meeting with interested MSPs, Transport Scotland and relevant stakeholders to discuss next steps, and MSPs should have a letter from me this afternoon to that end. I think it is imperative that MSPs are engaged with this work, and I recognise the rightful strength and constituency interest to that end. As part of the re-tendering process, Transport Scotland will engage with representatives of the construction industry, uh, including the Civil Engineering Contractors Association, on how elements of its standard terms and conditions for such projects might be modified to encourage more bidders to participate in future. I think we also need to recognise, however, that the construction market has changed substantially in recent years, so we want to work very much with the supply chain while securing, of course, a good deal for the Scottish taxpayer. Now, undoubtedly, the delivery of the overall A9 duelling programme has been impacted by a number of external factors. And although good progress has been made securing the statutory consents, like many other construction projects across the world, progress has been significantly disrupted by the pandemic. In addition, I don't need to remind members that the UK economic climate has been extremely volatile in recent times, particularly in the immediate aftermath of the UK government's mini-budget in September of 2022. Presiding officer, members will also be aware that Transport Scotland has been assessing the most suitable procurement options for the remaining sections of the A9 duelling programme. Now, following the principles of the Scottish Public Finance Manual, that work has included consideration of whether procurement should be on the basis of a series of capital-funded design and build contracts, similar to that used for the recently completed Lancarty to Pass of Burnham project, or whether a number of larger-scale, resource-funded public-private partnership contracts similar to that used on the Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route should be used instead. Now, due to recent economic volatility, including, of course, as I mentioned, impacts on borrowing costs, on the, uh, on borrowing costs of the UK government's mini-budget, it's been necessary to look at the market changes on the available procurement options. And in light of the outcome of the Tomat and Tomoy procurement, that assessment must now consider the potential cost implications of any changes to the terms and conditions in our roads contracts. Now, members will know that the original completion date for the duelling of the A9 was scheduled to be 2025. And as MSPs will now understand, that timescale is simply no longer achievable. However, I will set out a revised timescale as soon as possible, seeking to minimise delay as far as possible. It is true that the target date originally set was always an ambitious challenge. It was also reliant on the timely and positive outcome of a range of factors, for example, completing public and stakeholder consultation, uh, statutory approval processes, market capacity, supply chain availability, and of course the availability of funding, all of which have been significantly impacted by the events I outlined earlier. That has made the 2025 deadline simply unachievable. And I appreciate that members will want to know what that new target date might be for completion of the A9 duelling programme, as do I. As previously stated, Transport Scotland is urgently considering a range of different options to provide ministers with advice 
on the most efficient way to duel the remaining sections. I expect to have that advice by autumn of this year, at which time I will update Parliament to put forward a renewed timescale for completion. I want to close, Presiding Officer, by reiterating this Government's unwavering commitment to deliver the benefits of the completed A9 duelling programme to the people of Scotland. We will uh, support that commitment by continuing to work uh, to obtain the outstanding statutory consents for, of course, the Pass of Burnham to Tay Crossing project and by completing the land acquisition required as soon as possible. We will also urgently engage with industry partners working together to progress the Tamath and Tamoy project in a way that offers a good deal for Scottish taxpayers. Presiding officer, this government committed to duel the A9 for good reason. Dueling of the route will improve connectivity between the Central Belt and the Highlands of Scotland. It will deliver better opportunities for tourism and business, and it will fundamentally improve road safety on the A9 and the lives of those who live in communities alongside the route. The Scottish Government's resolute commitment to full dueling of the A9 remains absolute, and I look forward to continued engagement with members as we refocus our efforts to deliver the outstanding sections of the road in as timely and as an efficient manner possible. Thank you, Minister. The Minister will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement. I intend to allow uh, around 20 minutes for questions, after which we will move on to the next item of business. I would ask those members who would wish to ask a question to please press the request to speak button, and I call Murdo Fraser. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I thank the Minister for advance sight of her statement, and can I welcome the temporary road safety measures which are currently being uh, implemented. But communities uh, along the A9, in Perthshire and the Highlands, have been waiting more than a decade for this government to fulfil its commitment to dual the A9 in its entirety from Perth to Inverness. Yeah. And in that time, we have seen just barely 10 miles completed out of a total of 80, just one-eighth of the total project. Yeah. Today, we might have hoped for some positive news, mm -hmm. some detail on the timetable for the long-delayed completion. Instead, all we have is more bad news, with a further delay to the Tamatan to Moy section. The Minister could tell us nothing about what the progress will be on the remaining sections. No details, no timescale, no hope, just empty words repeated over and over again about an unwavering commitment. Presiding yeah. officer, actions speak louder than words. Last year, 12 people lost their lives on single carriageway sections of the A9. More people will die this year and the next and the year after as this SNP promise is not delivered. So can the Minister give us any indication when this long-standing commitment will actually be met and this long-delayed and vital road safety project will actually be completed? Minister. I thank Virgil Fraser for his question. I very much recognise the strength of uh, of interest from members, particularly Mr Fraser, who I recognise raises uh, the A9 with myself and the Cabinet Secretary on a, a fairly regular basis, noting his, his own interests in his region. Um, and I recognise there will be similar members from, from other parts of uh, the local area who will want to do likewise. There are fundamentally a number of challenges the Government has faced in recent times. He will be aware, I, I heard the Deputy First Minister in response, I think, to uh, a question from his benches earlier on, outlining outlining uh, laying out rather some of the financial challenges the government has faced in recent times. First of all, of course, in relation to the impacts of the pandemic, which cannot be uh, understated, particularly in relation to the construction industry. We, we recognise right across the piece, not just in relation to roads building, the impact of the pandemic on uh, more broadly some of the challenges we face in relation to construction. We have had the inflationary impacts in relation to Ukraine and layered on top of that, of course, the impacts uh, coming from uh, his colleagues down south in relation to the mini-budget. All of that needs to be looked at in its totality. That is why the work that Transport Scotland are undertaking at the current time is hugely important to assess the, the market implications for where we can make the best progress uh, in, a, as most tim in the quickest and the most efficient way possible. I recognise some of the challenge here, and that is why this afternoon I have written to members to outline the approach I intend to take working with members such as Mr Fraser to reassure them of the approach we intend to take in government. I think it's also worthwhile reflecting on the fact that we have made progress um, in recent times. We have invested, um, as I mentioned, I think £431 million to date delivering the duelling programme. Of course, we need to adhere to the statutory processes in relation to roads building. That does take time. And I would like as Minister to be able to move more quickly on this, but I recognise there are processes we need to adhere to in relation to uh, roads building. More generally, as I have outlined to the member, I am keen to come back to the Parliament later this year. The Tamat and Tamoy uh, section has been 
uh, obviously a challenging one. I don't think it's one that ministers would have uh, expected. It's been quite an unusual um, occurrence having only one tender uh, in this instance. And therefore, we are moving forward at pace in the retendering of that specific section. And I will come back to Parliament later in the year to set out that timeline that the member has asked for. Uh, Rhoda Grant. Presiding officer, this is a total betrayal of the Highlands, a broken promise, which I wonder if the government ever intended to keep. The scale of the project is exactly the same as it was 16 years ago, sadly almost exactly the same given the lack of progress and lives are being lost on this dangerous road. This is an issue of her own government's making. Had they even attempted to adhere to their own timescales, contracts would have been awarded by now. And it's also shameful that on the day that Volodymyr Zelensky is addressing the UK Parliament, the SNP ministers are trying to blame the war in Ukraine yeah. for their failure yeah. to deliver yeah. a manifesto pledge yeah. from 2007. Yeah. Can I ask the minister now to come clean on the estimated timescale of duelling the A9 to Inverness? And if she can't answer that, can she at least give an indication of when the route between Inverness and Dalwhinnie and between Perth and Ball and Lewig will be fully duelled? And will she now apologise to the people of the Highlands for this gross betrayal? Minister. Uh, to respond to Ms Grant's question, um, I think you know, I would ask the member to reflect on some of the other investments that the government is delivering in the region in which she represents. I was in Inverness, for example, only last week, opening Inverness Airport Station, a significant investment in the local area which will help to improve connectivity. She also mentioned, of course, the increase that we've seen in recent times in relation to the number of fatalities on the road. She attended, of course, the meeting I convened with MSPs to look specifically at that issue and ask questions of Bear Scotland and I think of Police Scotland as well. It's hugely important to recognise the additional investment. I'm sure she does in the short-term measures that I brought forward at the end of last year, which will help to improve road safety on the route. Now, Ms Grant has asked about a timetable. I think I gave Mr Fraser an answer to the substantive point that that work is being taken in its totality to look at the outstanding sections in their totality, the most efficient route for delivery. And I will come back to Parliament to update members on that later this year. I call Emma Roddick to be followed by Jamie Hawker johnson Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I'm certain that correspondence is already coming in from, from constituents who are extremely disappointed and concerned about the news about Tomat and Tumoy. And I have to say that I share their disappointment. I can't overstate how difficult it will be for locals to believe that this project will be carried out in the face of another delay. And I hope that the Minister is able to provide assurance that the Scottish Government remains committed not only to this project, but to the people of the Highlands amidst continued accidents and fatalities on the road that it has committed to duelling. Can she please give some more detail on how severely restarting the procurement process could delay the duelling of this stretch of road? And can she tell me whether there is an issue with the Transport Scotland procurement process which makes it unattractive to bidders? Minister. Uh, I thank the, the member for her question. Um, now, I, I do want to give that reassurance that Ms Roddick was seeking in relation to the people of the Highlands. She will know, as she was at the opening of Inverness Airport Station last week, how committed the government is to continuing investment in that part of the country. And I recognise very much her interest uh, in the route as a, a local MSP. Transport Scotland's design and build works contract has been successfully implemented for the last 20 years. Um, I think the member asked a question around about some of the challenges in relation to that. That is all being considered in the round in relation to how we can move forward at pace. If there are changes that we need to make uh, within Transport Scotland to the way in which we approach these projects, then of course that will be looked at because we need to make sure we are attracting as much uh, opportunity for investment as possible and that bidders are not put off potentially from uh, the process. Now, recent years have seen a decline in the numbers of tenderers, I think it's fair to say. And we do understand from industry contacts that that's largely due to the terms and conditions set out in our contract, of course, including risk transfer. But as I mentioned, Transport Scotland are reassessing um, that approach in light of the current market conditions, which also sit alongside changes that we may have to take uh, moving forward. We will carefully look at how we can get that best balance between achieving cost certainty, making our contract attractive, of course, to the market, looking at appropriate risk allocation, which is fundamentally important, um, but also looking at uh, the role of contracting parties and improving, I think, that collaboration between Transport Scotland and the contractor. I call Jamie Hulker-Johnson to be followed by Fergus Ewing. 
the Minister has admitted today what we've all known for some time, that the 2025 date isn't going to be met. And communities along the A9 and road users themselves have been kept in the dark on when and if this project will ever be completed. So can I ask the Minister how many years behind this project currently is? And can I also ask her when she was first told that the 2025 date was not going to be met? Minister. I thank the member for her, her, his question. I, mean, I think um, in response to Mr Fraser, this work is ongoing and will report later in the year. And I would like to come back to Parliament uh, later this year to give that update and that reassurance in relation to the, the deadline. Um, of course, we have to fulfil the statutory processes in relation to carrying out any major roads project in Scotland. And it is also clear that the market conditions at the current time would not have allowed us to deliver the full dueling programme within the original timescale as previously set out regardless of the delivery model that we choose. So therefore we are looking at the most optimal delivery programme to give that certainty to the public. I recognise the member's point in that regard. That's why, of course, I have been working closely with MSPs, including the member, um, on how we can better work with communities to ensure they understand the next steps in relation to the programme. And to that end, of course, I've written to uh, MSPs this afternoon, inviting them to engage with me and Transport Scotland on the next steps in the delivery of the project. I call Fergus Ewing to be followed by Neil Bibby. Presiding officer, today's news will be met in the Highlands with shock, incredulity and anger. So I ask the Minister, why does Transport Scotland, unlike its counterparts south of the border, put all risks of unforeseen costs on contractors? Surely that makes and has made bidding less attractive. And why is it, and we are nearly two years into this Parliament, that we still do not have a revised timetable to replace a deadline that every single person in the Highlands knows was never going to be achieved? Minister. Um, I thank Mr Ewing for his question. I recognise his strength of feeling, of course, on the A9 in particular, but also on the A96, which is in his constituency. We have met uh, on this route and on the A96 in his constituency and in the Parliament on a number of occasions now. And I'm keen to work with the member on uh, supporting his interests and, and other interested MSPs, because it's important we get the next steps right. I mean, I think I've outlined to members some of the challenge we face in recent times, and we have had keen interest, of course, at the industry event days when the tender for Tomat and Tomoy was first launched. That was positive at the beginning of the procurement process. We had three contractors pre-qualified for the bid. One of those, of course, withdrew earlier in the process, with a further contractor withdrawing on the day before tenders were due for submission, resulting in only one tender being submitted. Um, Transport Scotland's design and build works contract, as I think I mentioned in response to Ms Roddick, has been used for over 20 years. I, I think some of the points uh, Mr Ewing has made are fair. These are all going to be considered in the wider work in relation to how we move forward at pace with the totality of the sections of the route that remain outstanding. We have, as I mentioned, I think in uh, a response to one of the Conservative MSPs, seen a decline in the numbers of tenders that are coming forward. So we do need to look at um, the approach we use within Transport Scotland. That fundamentally will be addressed as part of the wider advice that will come to ministers in the autumn to ensure we have the best approach within Transport Scotland to attract um, the most number of bids moving forward to deliver the programme as efficiently and as timidly as possible. I call Neil Bibby to be followed by Jim Fairley. Thank you, President Officer. The Minister said several times today that the Government is absolutely committed to fully duelling the A9. Um, are the Greens fully committed to duelling the A9? Yes or no? Minister. I'm not a Green Minister. I call Jim Fairley to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you, President Officer. The A9 in my constituency is fully, fully duelled, but the Shinnefoot Junction has been an ongoing concern for local folk for many years. Now, following the Minister's visit to the junction with me last year, which I'd like to put my rec uh, on record my thanks for doing so, I was delighted to learn that the local authority listened to those local concerns and rejected the housing developer's plans to only put an off-slip on place when the requirement for the continuation of the housing development required both an on and an off-slip. Can the Minister say anything about what she will do to ensure that, as the A9 developments continue, she will press to make sure that those incredibly dangerous junctions are given proper consideration to ensure they are safe for those trying to navigate them? 
Minister. I think Mr Fairley raises a fair point. I met with him, of course, and community representatives to discuss some of their concerns around about um, the Shinnefoot Junction. And as I noted at the time, the junction proposals there were subject, of course, to the ongoing planning considerations with the local authority. Now, my officials uh, are still in dialogue with Perth and Kinross Council and local developers on that matter to ensure the safety on the E9 is maintained in that location and also the access to and from the local communities is improved where possible. It was really helpful actually to get a site visit with Mr Fairley to see some of the challenge in that regard locally. Of course it sits with the developers uh, to develop proposals necessary to access their developments but I'm more than happy to continue that dialogue with Mr Fairley noting his constituency interest on the, on the uh, section of the route he has identified. I call Liam McCarthy to be followed by Mark Ruskell. Uh, thank you very much. Can I thank the Minister for advance sight of the statement? I think Fergus Ewing and Emma Rodick have eloquently expressed the reaction that will be amongst people in the Highlands to this uh, announcement that effectively this pr promise on dueling the A9 has gone the same way as the promise on rolling out superfast broadband. But the A9 doesn't stop at Inverness. So what reassurances can the Minister offer to communities north of Inverness that the Government is committed to investment and improvements in the safety of that road, that stretch of the A9? Minister. The Government is absolutely committed to continuing those investments um, and I want to give the Member a reassurance to that end. I also would more generally uh, observe that in investments from the Government in terms of road safety have been increasing um, and will be increasing. Um, I have outlined some of the measures taken uh, in relation to the short-term measures. Of course, those target the route between Perth and Inverness, but I recognise some of the further challenges that are ongoing from the route north of Inverness. Um, during the October recess, I uh, met with Bear Scotland and Transport Scotland representatives to look at some of the junction closures that will be happening further north of Inverness, and I'm more than happy to write to the member on, uh, with further detail in relation to the financial uh, investments that we've made on that part of the I call Mark Ruskell to be followed by John Mason. It's clear from speaking to Persia constituents living alongside the A9 that accelerating road safety work is everyone's top priority. Now, the Minister has helpfully outlined some of the urgent safety measures that are being delivered, but can she update me on what consideration has been made of proposals to reduce speed limits on dangerous sections of the road, particularly between Burnham and Dunkeld? Minister. Um, we have no plans to reduce speed limits on the A9 and those proposals to amend speed limits generally would emerge as uh, the outcomes of the National Speed Management Review conclude. I'm more than happy to give the member an update on that. That work is ongoing. I expect it to report in the coming months and that National Speed Management Review will provide us with the evidence base to consider any changes in future. I call John Mason to be followed by Graeme Simpson. Thank you. Um, inflation is clearly an issue in all of this. And we were told at the Finance Committee that some projects have gone up by 30% in cost. Uh, caused perhaps by Ukraine and also Brexit. Can the, is the Minister concerned that we run the risk of tendering again and reaching the same process that there is very little interest and a very high price? Minister. Um, I recognise the, the challenge that the member has outlined and um, I think, as I have mentioned in a response to another member, um, we did originally have three bidders pre-qualified for the bid, which is important to observe. Um, and as I have mentioned, one of those bidders withdrew early in the process with the further uh, contractor withdrawing on the day before tenders were due to, uh, for submission. So that resulted in only one tender being submitted. Now, the outcome of that procurement competition was fairly unexpected. It's quite unusual. Um, we've looked at some of the external factors that have contributed to that. I think, as the member alluded to, Brexit, Ukraine, um, COVID-19, and of course, inflation caused by the UK government's mini budget have all had a, a wider and a broader impact on the construction industry. The end of 2022 was also an extremely challenging time for the construction sector more generally because, of course, we had peak inflation and market volatility additionally. So forecasts from the Building Cost Information Service show the market is likely to settle over the coming months and years, and we would anticipate that will help us to get best value in the re-procurement exercise. And Transport Scotland, of course, will engage with industry partners such as uh, the uh, CECA to consider improvements that can be made both to our design and build contracts, which has been a theme from some members' questions today, but also in relation to contract delivery strategy and the procurement mechanisms that we use. I call Graeme Simpson to be followed by Gordon MacDonald. Thank you. Jenny Garuth has put the A9 on hold today. That so-called unwavering commitment to deliver is empty. There is no delivery programme. But I want to ask why she thinks that firms are showing a lack of interest in working with the Scottish Government. This has been known about for years now. It doesn't exist elsewhere in the UK. What's the problem? Minister. 
I'm not necessarily sure I would uh, agree with the, the premise of Mr Simpson's question there. Um, I think it's also worthwhile observing that Transport Scotland initially have also been looking within their own market consultation at feedback from the construction industry um, following the pandemic. And it's important we learn lessons from the pandemic and implications that has had on the construction industry more generally. That's given us an opportunity to look at closely sequencing, for example, construction work in a way that won't result in excessive disruption. But also there have been several significant changes um, through the market consultation, including, of course, as I've mentioned, some of the uh, international impacts challenging economic circumstances and including, of course, the UK government's mini budget. And I think it's important that Transport Scotland do reassess their construction uh, contracts in light of that uh, change more generally to the member's question. We will look at how we can get that best balance between achieving cost certainty, but also making sure that our contracts are attractive to the market. And I think that is fundamentally important as we move forward with the retendering uh, programme. Uh, I call Gordon MacDonald to be followed lastly by Douglas Thompson. Mr MacDonald. This announcement will clearly come as a disappointment to the communities and to those who have campaigned on the issue over the years. But it's important to focus on exactly how this happened. Can the Minister confirm that this decision has been taken at a time of extreme financial pressures globally, based on an assessment of value for money and in line with Treasury Green Book requirements, which ministers are required to follow? Minister. Uh, yes, the outcome of the procurement competition was, uh, as I think I have said now, unexpected. Now, we have touched on some of the external factors that have contributed to that. But the end of 2022 was a, a really challenging time to procure a major infrastructure project. Of course, we had peak inflation at the end of last year and that market volatility more generally. All of that coincided with the end of the tender process. Now, following what was a pretty difficult and a complex procurement procedure, Transport Scotland has decided not to award the contract for um, to Matt and to Moy section under the current procurement competition. Now, having carefully reviewed that tender, we have concluded that it does not meet best value for the current time for the taxpayer. We will, though, uh, seek to secure that continuous improvement in performance whilst also looking at the appropriate balance between quality and cost. And it is hugely important that has regard to um, broader factors in relation to the economy, efficiency, effectiveness, but also to contribute to the achievement of sustainable development. I think that the member's question is uh, well put, but I am hopeful that the retendering process will deliver um, a range of options for us to move forward at pace with. And I call Douglas Lambson. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Can I ask the Minister if the delay to the A9 project will have a knock-on effect to other roads projects? The A96 was meant to be fully dualled by 2030. Will the commitment be met? Minister. Um, I think the member will have received an invitation to meet with the contractors who have um, carried out the substantive work in relation to the A96. So I look forward to meeting with the member on that point uh, and the contractors to talk to the review which has been carried out over the past year. Thank you, Minister. That concludes the statement. There will be a short pause before we move on to the next line of business to allow front bench teams to change position should they wish. Thank you. <laughs>